Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Haley. Today I am excited to say that it is February favorites time. This month went slightly faster than January, but still kind of felt like it dragged on a little bit, even though it's a short month. I'm excited for March, big fan of the month of March because we have St. Patrick's Day, which we're big fans of in my household. We have spring break this month, so I am, I'm very excited. I had a few favorites this month. I mean, I was so excited to share about them and I just kept making sure that I was marking things down on my favorites list as I went and tried things and continued to use them. A lot of them are brand new products too, so I'm really excited to share them with you. So let's just get into it. I feel like I look slightly crazy. It's later in the afternoon. I normally film first thing in the morning, but my husband and I went to Costco for his catering and we had a entire flatbed full of food and a cart full of food, which I was pushing. So I feel like I got sweaty and like my makeup kind of, I didn't try really hard on it. I was trying to put it on quickly today. If I look slightly disheveled, that's the reason. I want to start with a shampoo and conditioner actually. The Kerastase Genesis shampoo and conditioner, but this is actually for let's see dry weakened hair prone to breakage i've only ever tried the normal of the genesis kerastase shampoo and conditioner and i saw this on sephora and i figured i would try it i had actually gone a couple of months without my genesis shampoo and conditioner and after i got my hair done last time i have really sensitive skin and i went to a salon i don't normally go to i am not in any way like blaming the salon or the person who did my hair i think she did as good of a job as she could but i think the products that they use i've gone there before i think my skin just doesn't really like them and so my scalp got really irritated and i was having such a hard time getting rid of it i mean it was bad like it was like peeling down to here and stuff like that and that happens to me just normally without getting my hair done. It can if I switch up shampoo and conditioner. So that plus not having the correct shampoo and conditioner, I was like, I have to just repurchase the Genesis. So I went to my normal salon, they were totally out. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna order it on Sephora. And I saw that they had this one, which was for the dry hair. And I'm like, well, I'm having a lot of dry issues. So I'm gonna try this. The difference is night and day, you guys. This shampoo and conditioner is pricey, I'd say it cleared up my dryness by about 70%. I'm still dealing with it a little bit. I have to make sure I really, when I don't wash my hair, take my makeup off really well at my hairline. And then I put like Aquaphor right on my hairline where it tends to get dry and that really helps. I don't get the flaking and stuff when I do that, but this really, really helped. And besides that, my hair just feels so healthy. The biggest indicator is when I let it air dry. It just feels so soft. And even when sometimes I go to sleep with it wet, I know you're not supposed to, but life of a teacher and I let it you know dry and it still ends up looking decent so I really really like this if you're prone to like drier hair that breaks I'm a big fan of this I already really liked the Genesis line and I like this one even more I'm going to keep probably repurchasing this this next product you can see me using in a clip here that I will insert it's the Milani precision brow pencil I really like this I think it's almost exactly the same though as the CoverGirl Microfine brow pencil. I think that if you found a shade in one that you liked better, it's almost the same formula. If you find one that's on sale or slightly cheaper, I'd go with that. But I am really enjoying this. I just think it's almost the same formula as that. So if you like that one, you probably would really like this. Sometimes I know just certain brands can be more accessible than others. So I really, really like this though. That's why I wanted to mention it. I just think if you've tried the CoverGirl one, it's almost the same. So I have the shade, let's see, I think it's soft brown. Yeah, I have the shade soft brown. I'd like to go a little lighter. Um, it definitely works, but because I have these like money pieces that are super blonde, I almost would rather go with an ashier type of brow product just to try to lighten everything and make it balance a little bit more. But the product I really love, it's lasting me a long time. I've had it for over a month now and there's still a lot of product left. So I'm really, really liking this this month. I like the spoolie, it works out well. This was the biggest surprise to me this month, the Flower Beauty Ultra Light Liquid Blush. And the reason why I say that, I love Flower Beauty products. Their bronzer though in this formula, I have it here. I do not like this. I keep using it because it's not terrible. It's really hard to blend though. 
for the bronzer. So when I saw this, I thought, oh my gosh, well, I wanna try it, but I really hated the bronzer. I really like this. This is like the opposite. You put on a few dots. It's not overly pigmented. I'm like, hallelujah. Like I like the e.l.f. liquid blushes too, but they're so pigmented. I like having a blush that you can kind of build up. I have used this under powder. Today I use this over powder. You put a few dots. I take a really dense brush like this e.l.f. complexion duo brush. I use this side and oh my gosh, it blends out so beautifully. The shade I have is toasty. It's a little bit orange for me. And I, when I first tried it, I was like, well, this doesn't work. I'm gonna have to get a different shade that works better. But the more I've used it, I actually really like it. It is more of a bronzy blush and I think it kind of works you know it's maybe not the best shade for me in the world it's a little orangey but I would like to use it up before I buy a different one but I definitely want to buy another one because these are so good this has got to be one of the best blushes powder or otherwise that I've tried recently I was really surprised because I really don't like the bronzer let me show you I mean you can see it in that clip but here's a swatch it's very like a pumpkin-y orangey bronzy type of color it really looks like it would be too dark for me but i think i make it work okay this one was another surprise it's the lip bar liquid lipstick in the shade hot mama i bought this on a whim i saw it in cvs and i was drawn to the color and i was like well i love liquid lipsticks might as well try it i mean it's from the drugstore i'd never heard of the brand before i didn't feel like wearing a red today i know strange but I was, like I said, I was trying to work quickly. This, I'm just gonna say it. This is the best liquid lipstick I've ever used. And I've tried a lot. First of all, look at this shade. So beautiful, just a true red, gorgeous. This lasts me all day. I mean, 12 plus hours. When I tried this out, I think I was wearing it for 10 hours. And I was helping my husband build some furniture. I was editing a video. So I really wasn't looking at my face throughout the day. At the end of the night, when I went to look at the mirror, it was perfect. It didn't look dry. It wasn't out of the lip lines. I had eaten. I had been drinking through a straw all day and it was still completely there and it looked beautiful. What's crazy to me about it though, is it's not super transfer proof like it does come off on straws if you're eating and drinking it it does come off some it's not like a locked in there kind of liquid lipstick but it somehow still lasts so well for 10 plus hours throughout the day it doesn't get out of the lip lines i i don't know how it did it and the reason why i say it's the best i have other liquid lipsticks that i love and that i've tried and that last a long time too it's the fact that this didn't dry out my lips and after 10 hours my lips still looked perfect they didn't look dry they didn't look tired or worn. I know it sounds weird for lips, but they do. Like if you wear liquid lipstick, you know what I'm talking about. At the end of the day, you look and you're just like, oh gosh, no. It doesn't latch on to peach fuzz like some of the other liquid lipsticks that I have. They'll like latch on to peach fuzz around my mouth, which is really weird, but some do. It doesn't do that. I could not believe it. I had to post about it on Instagram and they actually responded to me, which was really sweet. But if you're looking for a good, long lasting liquid lipstick, look no further. And it's available at the drugstore. It's so, so good, you guys. I love it so much. Like you can see it now, it's dried down, but it's still, it comes off. Like it still comes off a little bit, but it still looks perfect at the end of the day. I don't know how they do it. Okay, so this next one, you can see me applying in the clip, but it's now completely worn off. It's not the most long lasting lip liner in the world. I'll start by saying that. You can still see it. It's still there somewhat on the bottom, but I also should just tell you what it is. It's the CoverGirl Simply Ageless Lip Flip Liner in the shade 150 Elegant Nude. I really like this. Like I said, it doesn't last all, all day. However, when I'm wearing a lipstick, like a cream lipstick, for example, that's I know is going to wear off throughout the day, I don't really want a lip liner that's going to outlive the lipstick because too many times at the end of the day, all that's left is my lip liner and it looks crazy. I kind of like if I'm going to wear a cream lipstick that I know is gonna come off 
to have a lip liner with it that is also going to very subtly wear off too. You know what I mean? If I'm going for something more long lasting for the lipstick, then obviously I'll go with something more long lasting for the liner as well. But that's not always the scenario. You know what I mean? This, I love the shade because I feel like it really goes, there it is there. I feel like it really goes with a lot of pinky nude lipsticks that I own. And I kind of like the shape because you'll see in the clip that you can just kind of turn it horizontally and it lines really beautifully. And I kind of like that it's a thicker liner because sometimes when a liner is too precise, I almost have a harder time getting the line correct. I know that sounds weird, but I like when it kind of goes onto my lip a little bit. And then I think that the transition from the actual lipstick to the lip liner is more seamless. And then for the top, you can turn it back vertically and do the top. And I mean, it's not perfect for the top, but it definitely works. I wouldn't say it's hard. It might take a tiny bit of extra time, but on the bottom, it's awesome. So I really, really like this. It's super creamy, super moisturizing. It, like I said earlier, if you have a cream lipstick, they will go beautifully together. So I just, I had to mention this because I've been reaching for this a lot this month. Okay, and along with that, the other lip product you can see me applying in these clips is the Revlon Super Lustrous, which I've been super into this line lately, you guys, in one of their brand new shades, Daylight Delight. This is like the perfect rosy, kind of mauve nudie shade. And look how well it goes with that lip liner. I have been reaching for this so much this month. I swear every other day. It is so gorgeous. It's so pigmented. Throughout the day, the luster, it comes off with eating and drinking and just living your everyday life, but it's so pigmented as well. It actually stays really well. And I feel like even without a lip liner, it stays pretty well throughout the day. And with a lip liner, even better. I mean, the color is still there. Just some of that luster is gone, but I kind of like that about it. It is perfect and you can see in the clip, I mean, gorgeous. And it's so easy to just grab and put on quickly as well. I love it. I've fallen in love with the formula. I, I almost never thought I'd fall in love with a lipstick formula quite like this, but it's so good. Like it's so moisturizing. It looks beautiful. It's so creamy. I just am gushing about this because I don't know how I'm apparently the last on the planet to realize how great this product is. It's just it's beautiful. Okay. And this next one, I'm also really excited about. I have a lot of lip products in this one. I have fallen in love with this formula as well. It's from Sigma. It's their lip cream in the shade New Mod. Now I need to preface by sharing that I actually am a Sigma ambassador. Last month, I applied and I got chosen, which I honestly was kind of shocked that I got chosen but I did get chosen and they sent this to me. However, I would hope most of you guys have been following me long enough to know that I'm not going to gush about something that I don't really love. This is another one that I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about it because it is a creamy, more lustrous lip product. I'm gonna apply this for you. First on my hand, you can see it there. It's a very similar color to the Revlon. It's a little bit deeper and mauve though. I'm gonna apply this for you because this one I don't have a clip of. Okay, I need to dip it back in because I put all of it on my hand. Let's see. So pretty. Again, this one looks beautiful with that CoverGirl lip liner as well. For one, I love the shade. It's a very velvet teddy type of shade. I love shades like this that are a little more mauve nudie, pink, rosy-ish shades. This formula surprised me so much because even though, again, it's more lustrous, the luster kind of wears off throughout the day in a good way. And what's left, like the Revlon product, is just pigment that is gorgeous. It doesn't dry out your lips. It just looks beautiful. It's easy to just keep continuing to reapply throughout the day. But also yesterday, I believe at school, I applied this in the morning and I had no time to touch it up throughout the day. I brought it with me, but I did not touch it up. At the end of the day, you could still see 
the product on my lips it wasn't as pigmented as this anymore the luster was not there but my lips still looked good because the pigment was still there and it was still even like the parts that had worn off wore off evenly but the color was still there if that makes sense i'm such a big fan of this if you've ever tried max love me liquid lip colors this is a very similar formula. I wouldn't say exactly the same. This is definitely a little more hydrating and a little more creamy. That one dries down a tiny bit more matte eventually, but it's very similar. So if you like those, you'll probably really like these. And if you like those, but you wish they were a little bit more hydrating, you would love these. I am so excited. I applied to be a Sigma ambassador because it was a brand that I already knew I really liked all the products I tried from them. And so I knew that filming content for them, which by the way, this is not one of those content pieces. If you're curious about the way it works, they ask me for two um, shorts type content videos to be uploaded to their site once a month. And then I post one of them. So I've already done that and it was about this anyway and i also they also sent me a brush that i'm really enjoying too i have absolutely fallen in love with this and i kind of want more shades i love it so much big fan of these if you've been like curious about them and you're like oh there's so many lip oils lip creams this is not a lip oil at all but the packaging can be misleading so definitely no it's not a gloss and it's not an oil it's definitely a lip cream and it's named correctly this next one is another one like the revlon product that apparently i've been just living under a rock it's the mac fix plus <laughs> i always wanted to try this because it's one of those cult products and you hear youtubers talk about it all the time like literally 10 years of me watching youtube and i've heard people gush about mac fix plus for 10 years I've heard people say, "You, I'm just gonna wet my brush with MAC Fix Plus and then I'm gonna apply my eyeshadow, right? Isn't that a thing we've all heard? I've always wanted to buy this. It's expensive. If I'm gonna buy something from MAC, it's probably going to be a lip product or it's going to be an eyeshadow palette, right? So I didn't wanna use money on a setting spray when I'm a, such a big fan of the Urban Decay. This was at my local Ross. Don't sleep on Ross and TJ Maxx. They have some good beauty products. And when I saw this, and I think it was maybe $12, I was like, sold. That's like the price of a setting spray at the drugstore at this point. So I bought it and for one, I love the finish that it gives. When you put it on, it truly melts everything together. If you then take a beauty sponge and you kind of pat over certain areas you wanna blend just a little bit more, it literally looks perfect. It gives you a glow that's not overpowering, that just looks lit from within. One of the first times that I used this, I actually used it before work, and I used it with the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. At the end of the day, I looked in the car mirror, which we all know that is like, whew. Sometimes I just purposely don't look in that because I don't wanna see what's there, but I did. It looked perfect in a way that I love the Estee Lauder Double Wear, but because it can be a little bit drying, it doesn't always look perfect after a seven to 10 hour day. You know, there's some creasing. It still looked perfect, as perfect as when I put it on. And I literally was like, have I never noticed this about the double wear before? Like, there's no way. I've been using this for years. It never looks as perfect. What did I do differently? And then I realized, this is the only thing I did different. I set my face with this at the end, used a sponge to blend in certain areas. And when I looked in the car mirror, it just looked beautiful. It looked like I had a natural glow and it looked flawless. I couldn't believe it. I have not noticed that. Even with like the Charlotte Tilbury setting spray, I have not noticed. So I love this and I've now been using it every single day and I'm reaching for it more than my Urban Decay and I love it. <laughs> you know what would almost be interesting too is I wonder about layering setting sprays. It's not something I've ever tried, but I wonder about, cause the Urban Decay really helps with longevity, but I feel like the finish of this one is incredible. I almost wonder if you put this on and then you put the Urban Decay on, if it would lock it in with that beautiful finish longer. That's something I'll have to experiment okay. with. This last one, you might laugh at me. It's the Kiss Look So Natural Fake Lashes in the style Shy. The lash is fine on its own. It's good. 
it looks fine. I have been loving cutting these in half and using the smaller end for the outer corners of my lashes. I love it for work because it gives my eyes just a little extra something, especially because I like to use liquid liner and I like a thick wing, but it doesn't overpower my very small eyes. I have small eyes, they're hooded, they're almond shaped. I have a lot of things working against me in the eye department. So I love something like this when I cut them in half and I use that smaller end and it blends in so well with the length of my natural lashes, which my natural lashes do not have a ton of length or volume, but I think it looks beautiful. It's, it's perfect for more of every day. And I'm not saying I'm gonna give up using a full strip lash, but I've definitely been reaching for these more than my full strip lashes because I just think for one, it's a little bit easier. They last for more uses, I feel like, and they just look better. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. In most situations, unless I'm doing a really dramatic eye, I'm liking this a little bit better. It does feel wasteful because you are cutting lashes and the other half I really don't do anything with because they're too long to me. Obviously it looks normal when it's the full strip lash, but when you cut them, that longer end just looks weird. I like using the shorter end. In that way it's wasteful. I do know half lashes exist. I feel like all of the ones I've looked at online still look like they would be too long for me. I feel like I'd have to look at some in person. I have heard about half lashes at the drugstore. I'll have to actually be on the lookout for some, but I don't see very many. So when I, I bought this and I use it as a full strip lash and I was like, all right, it's fine. I mean, I still think I like my Kiss MLBB lashes better than my lashes, but better in their um, Bare Affair style for a full strip lash. But I thought, well, what if I just cut them? Like what if I cut them in half and I use the shorter end on the ends of my eyes and I've fallen in love. The rest of, is history. If you have a similar eye predicament as I do, you might wanna try these because they look really good. And I got co I've gotten compliments on them too where people are like, are those your real lashes? It's so pretty. And I'm like, no, they're half lashes on the ends. And they're like, yeah, it looks really natural because it's just more volume just at the end. So I love these. If you enjoyed this video, I hope that you will subscribe and give it a like. It does really help out my channel. If you're already subscribed, I hope you hit the notification bell so you get notified when I upload new videos. And I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Love you guys. Bye.